Welcome back to Fan Talk, everybody. Uh, we are going to do the long-awaited uh, review of the newest Star Wars. Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker. <coughs> All right, well, there's a lot to break down and talk about. A lot to talk about in this. And, uh, you know, this video, we're going to go... Heavy spoilers. He first heavy spoilers. We're going to go in-depth to a lot of things. I personally want to talk and contrast and compare this trilogy to the original opposed to the prequel trilogy and kind of talk about my why I have my likes and dislikes. Um, and uh, Yeah, we'll start in the big picture and then work our way down. And then work our way back, yeah. So, to start off, uh, you know, the... Uh, this finishes the trilogy. This finishes the trilogy. It wraps things up. Uh, my first... <laughs> thought of this film when I watched it was not disdain, which I thought it, there was a good possibility there was going to be after the last one. It, the Really, the first thing that hit me was trying to keep up. It was, it was fast -paced. so fast-paced, and it was so much, and I understand why, but we'll get into that yeah. later, but it was just basically two movies, or at least a movie and a half, yeah. crammed into one movie. I haven't been like this in a theater since Aquaman. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. You know, I mean, it was just a lot compacted. Well, and let's look at the three different trilogies in the series. Um, there's only one actual complete trilogy. Yes. Because uh, the original A New Hope was written as a standalone movie. They had no idea it was going to be picked up for an entire yeah. series. And so uh, Empire and Jedi are a two-parter that round out that trilogy. Yes. Uh, the prequel trilogy is the only one actually written as a solid, solid trilogy, trilogy, beginning to end with the, with the concrete storyline. Yeah. Um, this one... Should have been the same. They should have had it one creative have. person or person or persons in creative control that created a an overlying storyline for the um, yeah. all three of them, and, and instead they kind of each gave it to yeah. each. Yeah, and we'll go back and talk about like why the the screw ups. But as far as the movie goes, the this movie, this particular movie, it was just a lot going on and well, very fast. Well, Abrams fast. Uh, picked up the reins again, and you could tell that. He wanted to tell his story and his, finish out his way, yeah. but he had to incorporate what happened in The Last Jedi. Yeah. And so the first 30, 40 minutes of this movie feels like it's a course correction back to what he wanted yeah. to do. And, and that is exactly it. You know, we can say as much as we want about what was said by each director and how Abrams kept saying, oh, no, no, you know, it, it, his movie was fine. But really, we knew better, and when you see this movie, you know better. Because so, there's a lot of course correction that you see, you can see going on. There was a uh, very little of Rose. Yeah. Um, uh, they brought in the Knights of Ren. Uh, uh, they kind of started bringing out a way to try and undermine uh, Kylo's uh, control over the First Order. Bring out a whole different thing as opposed to the First Order. Yeah. Um, uh, having a bit more of a redemptive uh, part to uh, Luke. I mean, there's all, every single different little way there was kind of like, okay, we're going yeah. change that. Oh, the first resistance went from like 20 people on the Millennium Falcon to an entire base again. Yeah. You know, it went from, uh, you know, also, I mean, it, like the little touch-ups of like having to touch on things that happened in the last one that were really atrocious. Like, you know, the maneuver, you know, it's like, yeah. oh, no, that would only happen once ever. It would only could work. And they didn't really have to explain it. They just basically said that would never work again. We're sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's what that was. That was like, we're sorry. I mean, explain away Snoke's existence from being in a bottle. Bob Model, yeah, they just basically showed it for a second. It was like oh, it was like an emperor clone for some reason. Yeah, he wanted to, for his his person to control the first order. Yeah, and okay, moving on. Yeah, yeah, and that was it. And and, and originally, I think there was going to be a lot more to it. I, I still have a theory that I don't believe necessarily Abrams originally intended on using the emperor. He says he did. I am not sold on that. I feel like Snoke really was going to be the bad guy, or he may have actually ended up being the Emperor clone. Yeah. Uh, there was something going to be going on with Snoke, and, uh, you know, Ryan yeah. Johnson shot that all to hell, and yeah. so he <laughs> just had to move quickly, you know, and come up with something. So all three of the movies in this new trilogy, um, this one felt more in tone and running, style, obviously, to the first one, Force Awakens, because it's another Abrams movie. Yeah. But, you know, you just got a complete change of tone and everything in that middle movie, which... You can't watch this as a back-to-back -back trilogy and feel like you had a fully satisfying storyline. You take yeah. a left turn and then have to go back. Yeah, it's, it's it doesn't flow together well as a series. Now, the movie as alone, though, is by far my fest for, uh, favorite of this, of this tr trilogy. If you call it a trilogy, of these three movies, this was the best one. And the reason, uh, the reason I and I'm there will be some black on the Force Awakens from that one because that yes, that was a solid movie. It was a good movie. It was very derivative of A New Hope. Um, it was. A, Carbon copy, you just this little, was, little bigger, a little better. This one know? at least had you know some fresh you know uh, storytelling in it. 
even with the storytelling having some issues. Yeah. Um, one of my bigger issues, which I the more I thought about, it, the more it kind of bothered me a little bit, is the opening crawl completely changes the direction from where we were at. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, Emperor, uh, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it explains all that stuff and how, and then we go straight into uh, uh, Ray being the daughter of Palpatine and all. You just get yeah. all that up front. It's just like right out of the door where that whole thing where she's a Palpatine, which we prophesized this was for a long time, but that should have been something that was more of a BAM or a MacGuffin, for, for instance, that like a, a small MacGuffin that leads to that or something. And it was more of a wow. But instead, we got three different MacGuffins going on. Yeah. Yeah, all kinds of craziness that we you didn't need all. Well, that's just, I mean, it's okay to have a MacGuffin. It's okay even in some instances to have two, especially if you're on some kind of like a treasure hunt. Yeah. Uh, like the national uh, treasure movies are MacGuffin after MacGuffin after yeah. That's a part of it. That's the whole point. Yeah. Uh, but in this one, it takes up a lot of screen time for him to go after a dagger, to go after fixing uh, 3PO's head, to going after the Wayfinder. You could have dumped... And they, imagine this is an opening crawl, something along these lines. Um, there's like there's a powerful force uh, emanating from the uh, Badlands, or uh, the, uh, that they need to find a way to get to. Um, uh, rebel spies have found a, uh, a dagger left behind by Luke that gives a clue to a Sith Wayfinder, which will lead him there. Bam! You have the MacGuffin taken care of. You can go straight to the first, like searching it down. Yeah. And then throughout the course of the plot, explain how the Emperor come out. And you're like, oh my god, wow, like halfway through. Yeah. The Emperor's back, and here's the explanations and you know, that. And then, like, towards the end, like, no, I am your grandfather. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you know? You could, you could it's right, instead of just dumping all the exciting stuff in the crawl, and then you're going on a wild goose chase on Wayfinders that yeah. eventually Kylo Ren even destroys. Yeah. I mean, exactly. There, it was, once again, and I'm not trying to pick on anybody. I, I like Star Wars. I, I like this one the best out of them. My thing is, uh, Star Wars is not ruined, by the way, in my opinion, no. by these films. But uh, but it was bad writing. It's yeah. just a lot of bad writing. And and again, uh, we, also we, like the uh, the end, uh, the uh, Emperor's fleet has to have a coordinated like antenna to lead the atmosphere of yeah. these spacefaring vehicles. Yeah, the spacefaring vehicle needs an antenna on the ground to just rise up out of the atmosphere. How has that ever had anything to do with Star Wars ever? And how you know, you've, and never, why would it? you've never seen that whenever any of the ships go in the atmosphere, yeah. even in and, uh, Rogue One. Yeah, and, and they're fighting on the ship. Your whole bad guy, you know, the things that are going to happen to, uh, to thwart your whole thing are all on your ship, sitting like this in space. All you have to do is bank. Oh, yeah, yeah, they could just knock everyone just off. Just bank. And everybody's gone. In fact, when the ship explodes, and it starts going like this, and they're all like, "Oh, we're gonna die!" And it's like that, they could have just done that. Yeah, you know. And so, like, bad writing. It's not so much bad. It's you could have had a great space it's battle. Lazy writing. You could have had a great space battle. Maybe only a certain portion of their uh, ships are ready to take off. Yeah, that way you can still have a kind of even fight. Yeah, and, and here's another thing with the, the explanation. Another one of the problems I had, uh, where it could have wrote more into this. I did pick up, which I don't know if everybody picked this up, but I did pick up the idea that with less Jedi on the planet or in the universe, the ones left kind of had the power of all the Jedi. Uh, yeah, a lot like uh, the Highlander. You know, each time you kill one, you become, one. <laughs> you kill the only one, you become more powerful. But they didn't really explain that. That was just kind of one of those things that's just left for you to kind of figure out. Yeah. So when the Emperor is like, I am like basically all the Sith, and he just shoots his Force Lightning into the air and is destroying the whole Armada, again, you start to go, why didn't he do that last time? Yeah. Like, you know what? If he's was so powerful. He's learned it since. Yeah, it's like, if he's so powerful, you know, and it's like, if he's a clone, he's all sick, and well, he got some power from we, her. We don't know if he's okay. a clone or if he's original. Yeah. yeah. He said unnatural means, but we yeah. don't know exactly what that meant. Yeah. So again, there was a lot of stuff that could have been wrapped up more if you weren't MacGuffin hunting through the first half of the movie. And here's the thing. And it, once again, my idea of bad writing or lazy writing, okay? In uh, Return of the Jedi, Right? Mm -hmm. uh, in Empire Strikes Back, Luke gets his butt handed to him. He gets his hand cut off. Vader kicks his butt. Luke does not... He toys with him. Yeah, he doesn't even come close to even being able to hold his own against Vader. So anybody that ever said he was a Peggy Sue is full of crap. But Luke earned it, right? So when he leaves in Jedi, which... I mean, in Empire, which in my opinion to this day is still a darn near perfect movie, you go back to the Jedi... That first scene when he walks into the uh, Jabba's palace, right? And he's like super powerful. He's wearing it all black, you know. He looks sharp. He looks ready. And you're like, you don't need to know how he got from here to there. You immediately can put it together that this guy 
has been training. A lot of time has passed between Empire and now. Six months. Yeah, six months. It's not like it's been a week, right. you know? And he's been training and honing his skills and become a lot more powerful. And in this movie, where there were scenes where they should have done that, like, they try and over-explain it. And then the things that really needed that explanation, they don't give it to you. They expect you to figure it out. So, like, the part with the Emperor and where he came from, how pow- why he was so powerful, why the Jedi had all this power, you know, um, that was never really truly explained. Yet, at the opening of the movie, we have to show Hooray floating in, in rocks and all that. We can acknowledge the fact she's been mega powerful through this whole movie. Through the whole series, she has been mega powerful. And she's gotten even more powerful each time. And yeah. then also Luke seems to have kind of bestowed upon her, like, okay, all the Jedi, the, the past will now be yeah, with you. Yeah, and, and so we didn't need all that. I mean, at this point, you know, you have to look at that character. It almost felt like everybody had called her such a Peggy Sue that they were just trying, no, look, she's training, we promise. I'm like, listen, she went up the bat against Kylo Ren with knowing nothing, and he was a hardcore battled, you know, Jedi and then Sith, and he got his ass handed to him. She is unbeatable. We understand that. Move past it, and let's move on with the movie. That's my personal opinion. And, and instead, they spend a big chunk of the beginning of the movie like trying to explain that how, like she's powerful now when I would have rather had other things explained to me. I was never on board with the whole she was a Peggy Sue thing. I think that the, the one fight at the end of Force Awakens I did have an issue with. But other than that, I never thought of her as that because Peggy Sue's are fan fiction where people write themselves in as being a badass with no background. Yeah. Um, they try. They gave her background even if people don't like it. Yeah. Uh, you know, she she was good at uh, engineering because she was a scavenger. She knew how yeah. that worked. She had to fight to survive in um, in the desert. So she was obviously already good at fighting. Um, the Force has shown that, or the movies have shown that Anakin, as a child, could immediately pilot a spaceship and win the first time. Yeah. Same thing with Luke. Same thing with her. So there is already a pattern to all that. The battle with that Kylo at the end of Force Awakens was my only big beef. And, with and that. that that was my my thing is like I heard a lot of people complain about this one where she pilots the ship over to the thing in the water. I'm like, that's something a good powerful Jedi could do. Don't An have eight a year old be a uh, blew a space station out of the sky the first exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that precedent yeah. is there. There. Yeah. If you you have the four and you actually have some way of using it and you know about and can kind of control it, then you can accomplish great feats. My problem is when you're fighting another Force user who is hardened, battle-trained, like Vader was when Luke went against yeah. him, you're going to lose. But you it, know? That was and, my big problem with that. Ray that was went my big problem, up there but... and just, just didn't kind of... I mean, she handed him his butt. Yeah, that was, I think, you know? bad writing. I don't think that she was meant to have been written intentionally as a Peggy Sue. And yeah. I never really thought of her as that way. I just thought that was a badly written um, scene at the end of the movie without yeah. giving it proper background or having it well-balanced. Yeah. Uh, but moving on. Moving, moving on. on. Back to this movie. Um, uh, Kagan Jin, Kagan Jin and had to learn how to, or he learned how to force ghost himself upon death. Yeah. And that seemed to be had to be a trained thing to learn. Well, he taught well, yes and no because that's really not Star Wars canon. You, you see mean, where I'm going with you, this? I know where you're going with this, and the whole thing is, uh, yeah, I understand that. Then Yoda was like, "Hey, Qui Gon taught me this, and I'm going to teach you, so you can practice at Obi Wan." And so those three people made total sense. But Anakin, or Vader, he never learned any of that stuff. Yeah. And when he dies, his Force Ghost appears. Even in the original cut, his all uh, Force yeah. Ghost yeah. appears. So I think it has to do with you know uh, Qui Gon figured it out. But Qui Gon was also like a, a really pow- honestly a very powerful Jedi. Maybe having some kind of interior balance or peace with the Force, the force as you die. As you die, and, and and also I think a lot of it is also knowing that your end is near. You know, Yoda, Obi Wan, Obi Wan knew he was going to lose. Luke Vader, did. yeah, Vader knew he was going to die. Luke chose to die. Yoda died of old age. I mean, Qui Gon had about two seconds to comprehend what was happening, and, and, and he had honestly been learning and focusing yeah. and working on this. So. I would think that if anybody's the odd one out, it actually would be kind of Qui Gon Jinn on that group, you know, because he like literally just got hosed last. Week. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he wasn't planning on getting beat. Oh, we wanted to force healed him. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was a similar kind of uh, uh, injury that uh, <laughs> Kylo had. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff talk of bad. There's a lot of stuff I enjoyed. I have enjoyed Ky- uh, Kylo Ren's character, especially in this. A lot of people I've heard complain about how it was so quick. Again, this movie had the... You, Kylo like, Ren was good. Yeah, I you know, like I feel like you had to move fast in this movie. So the, a lot of the, my complaints about how I have so much of it, but overall, I'm not complaining about that because I understand why it was done that way. You know, uh, Abrams had a lot to get out in, in, in one movie. 
And I'm glad they finally brought in the Knights of Ren to yeah, explain that. Yeah, they brought the Knights of Ren back into it. And with Kylo's character, you think about it, he's been fighting on whether or not he was really a bad guy since the Force Awakens. He was Awakens. one of the most layered characters in the whole yeah, series. Yeah, since the Force Awakens. You know, so, and then when he killed his father, that was really hard on him. And though it was supposed to be a thing that hardened him going to the Sith... I don't really feel like it did. In fact, it caused it, even it, more turmoil. It more, tr- more turmoil and built a closer bond with him and his mother. And then whenever, uh, you know, Ray heals him and then bounces, I feel like, you know, that connection with his mother or whatever, I, I, like, I don't feel like it was really him just shifting back and forth really quick. And in the original book series, you know, uh, Leia's children, you know, uh, one of them does go to the dark side and come back. Uh, Luke, uh, several other people have gone to the dark side and come back. This is not something that's not a one-way, Star, ticket. A one-way ticket. It's not Star Wars, something that can't happen. And I really don't feel like it was really quick because I don't feel like Ben was ever... Fully gone. Fully gone. I think that kind of less so than Vader... You oh, know, yeah. and, and I feel like he was just angry and young and some bad stuff happened to him and he came around. Yeah. And I mean, I really actually, through the whole series, but especially in this film, I really liked his character. Another good thing about this one, I liked um, uh, Ray's uh, path on this one, uh, you know, finding out who's her lineage yeah. and her struggling to deal with that. And then uh, her deciding at the end, like, okay, well, do I need to do this to help my friends versus, oh my God, there's other people here to help me. Yeah. Her... I thought she did a good job on uh, her path. Yeah. And I know some people are going to complain about it, but I actually enjoyed that part about it. Yeah. Um, and and I, then at the very I, end, obviously, the, the title of Rise of Skywalker, that actually has two meanings. Yes. One, the rise of uh, Ben uh, as a, part of the Skywalker clan. Yes. Because um, Solo is just a given name from a yeah. trooper. Um, so he's the last of the Skywalkers, quote unquote. So it's his rise coming back good again. And it's also the rise of the Skywalker by her adopting the name. Yes. Because no one was going to go around the last day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, who are you? I'm uh, Ray Hitler. I mean, Palpatine. Uh, Skywalker. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ray Palpatine. <laughs> we good? We good? No, uh, yeah, and honestly, even the, the love thing there, which some people were like, oh, that's stupid. Like, you know they had something for each other, you know? And it's like, at first there was that theory, well, maybe they're related. And I'm like, no, nope, that's too easy. And no. I think that really he, I think that he had a bond with her. And I think that he, you know, kind of a love at first sight, if you call it that. But like, he really cared about her deep down. And she had something for him too. Really, that was kind of going on. That's why he really, let her win in uh, Force Awakens. Maybe that's why he let her win in Force <laughs> Awakens. Yeah, maybe that was it. No, but... Uh, so there was a mutual respect between them, and so like the whole kiss at the end and all that, you know, him coming back, basically just to give his life for her, you know, I I was totally okay with all that. Yeah, it was kind of, of uh, enjoyable. Even at the end of Last Jedi, I felt like it was more of a Romeo and Juliet situation. Like it could happen, it's gonna end bad. Yeah. One of, or one or both of them. Yeah. And that's pretty much I mean, what you needed to. Yeah, and I mean, I almost wouldn't have minded either if uh, Ray would have been the one that died and he had survived, which is what it looked like at first, and I was like, okay, and then he brought her back to life, and I was like, man, that's kind of almost too campy for them both to come out of this, and then, you know, and then he died, and I was like, ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, but if he had been, if she died and he'd been the one that lived, I would they would have had to show him the scene where he would have walked up to Chewie and be like, sorry, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right? Yeah. Though there was certain things that, you know, made it really hard for him to be redeemable. But you could say yeah. the same thing about Vader. Oh, even more so Vader. Yeah, yeah, Vader, yeah, yeah, if he would have, you know, come back and not gotten killed, it would have been like, man, you, you, you like, killed all the Jedi. Yeah, like, all of them. Like, you can't come to our week, you walk party. You're just no, going gonna... to... You're going to have to hang out out there. <laughs> Nobody likes no, you. No nub yet for you. <laughs> yeah, no nub, nub for you, buddy. Uh, another thing I like... <laughs> I actually liked the uh, idea of the First Order and then the Last Order and it all being orchestrated by the Emperor, which I've always been a massive Emperor fan. So the fact that they tied this into the rest of the entire nine-part uh, series by bringing the Emperor back, some people were like, oh, you just brought back the familiar face. Yeah, but it's a good one. Yeah. I mean, he was been the overarching villain the entire series. And, uh, uh, and there's also precedence in the original Extended Universe that he did create clones of himself and did keep coming yeah. back. My problem with it, though, is this. is like in the original like books that came afterwards... There were clones of the Emperor. Luke was still around. Leia was still around. Solo was still around. Leia's children are still around. The Jedi Order was there. And the Emperor didn't really win. He was still just trying to get that foothold and keep taking on. Everything wasn't for nothing. My biggest problem with this trilogy, honestly, the, my biggest problem with why I don't like it, is that, again, the mistreatment of the original characters all the way up to and including, in the end... Basically, with the Emperor being there and everything being as it was, 
it basically takes your whole original trilogy and just is like whoosh, it all meant nothing. That's what they're gonna bring meant up. Meant nothing. Like Anakin's sacrifice. Yeah, Anakin's sacrifice meant nothing. The original story was really all about Anakin's, you know, fall and then savior. You know, and and then the rise of his children to actually, you know, bring really? balance to the Force. And in the end, like his whole lineage is now wiped out. Like his actual lineage is wiped out. But and, balance has been brought. And brought. <laughs> and all their sacrifices, Luke's sacrifices, Leia's, Vader's. It's all like I guess. It, I, I guess now. I guess now it's all individual parts of the overall story, as opposed to any one of them having like. The solid, like, this is and that's that's the problem with trilogy, uh, with you know, keep making trilogies. You have to do stuff. certain you, things. You you have to pay attention, in my opinion. Look at the original story and pay homage to that, which I think he was doing in the original film. Which is why I still don't believe originally he planned on bringing the Emperor back. I think Snoke was going to be the big bad. I think he probably had a pretty good plan going for what he was going to do. And I think, I think. Uh, you know, Ryan screwed it all up, and I, I really do. And I, I, I you're not going to convince me otherwise. I feel like he came in and made his artsy Star Wars movie, his girl power Star Wars movie, which made no sense, followed no Star Wars tradition or lore, and. Then all of a sudden, everybody's like, yep, everybody's pissed. This is horrible. Please fix this. Here's and, tons of fan service. Yeah, and here's tons of fan service. Which, for some fans, like the Emperor, I'm like, okay, I'm cool. Yeah. But other but, fans don't like Yeah, it. well, but, but, and I think, again, I don't think it was malicious, but whenever you're doing all this, I don't even think he really thought about, oh, so I just made the whole, you know, Vader's sacrifice, everything. It just is pointless, you know? It's just but, part, of the, uh, part of the bigger part of the story yeah, as opposed to being the story. Yeah, it's just... It, it null and voids your original character's meaning altogether, you know. And and to me, that's that's the big disservice of this this series. And uh, I feel like, you know, for true fans of Star Wars who love the originals, you know, this series has done more damage than the prequels ever could have dreamt of doing. A lot of people thought that the trilogies were kind of did some damage. And the I'm prequel. like the, the prequels, and I was like, the Metachlorians were really the only big thing that like was yeah. Stupid Star Jar was and, minimized and, and, as time went on. Yeah, I mean like. All the, the the things people hated, you can take the bad writing and the you know and this that and the other all out of it. Overall, it still told the story of Anakin and how the Emperor manipulated him and how he turned to the dark side, and then he sought out and destroyed the Jedi. You know, and it was all it was well, still all good. Another bit of lazy writing in this one was bringing the Emperor in so quickly. Like, yeah. Like oh, by the way, he's been here all along. No, you needed to plant those seeds in the earlier movies, and they didn't have a chance to. Yeah. Um, Another issue, not issue, just I'm just bring up the different various things. I mean, as I said, I actually liked it and enjoyed it, and I'm, um, but it's not without its issues, believe me. Um, uh, I'm glad they brought Lando back. I was mm -hmm. happy to see him. I felt like uh, he was a cameo in the desert scene, and I felt like he was a cameo at the end. I felt mm -hmm. like, other than a couple good bits of advice he gave, I felt like they maybe could have been a better part written for him. It, they could have made a bigger part for him, but again, there was already so much going on, it was hard to get anything else squeezed in this movie. Um, the overall underlying theme of if he was there, what he could have brought to the table, there's a lot there. He was in the original Resistance. He knows people all over the galaxy. I mean, this guy was like, you know, Han. He's been around for a long time, wheeling and dealing. But this didn't really showcase any of that. It was really like, hey, look, Lando's here. Hey, I'm going to go find some people. Yeah. And, and, and also, it, this may or may not be my daughter or granddaughter. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and the other big one that like kind of bothered me is, and it probably wouldn't meant as much to me if there hadn't have been the actual saying of, you know, oh, we got our big end game moment as well, is how whenever Lando pops up, it's just like, Perfect timing. Perfect timing and a thousand ships and it's like... I all knew that he, special way of Yeah, doing and then he hears the voice like right beforehand. He's like, oh, we're here. You all, know? They, all they're missing is on your left. Yeah, you know, exactly. It was a very end game moment and I was kind of like... They didn't earn it. Uh, I just felt like it was a, a rip off. I mean, if that would have happened first, then I think Endgame was ripping them off. Yeah, but, but Endgame, it was, Endgame, no matter which way it came first, still earned that. Yeah, they did. But I mean, I'm just saying that whole like, you know, it just really felt... Very copied. Uh, a couple of things I want to bring up. Um, uh, Huck's being a spy. Like, just like? Uh, again, I liked it. I the liked motivations it. were well set up on that. But yeah, I liked it. I even liked the fact that his overall in character didn't change. He was still a dirtbag. But the way it was handled was handled poorly. It's like, oh, he's a spy. I'm the spy. I'm going to get you out of here. And then they just gun him down. And like, Well, that and, uh, supplying information is one thing. Actively uh, allowing uh, rebel... 
uh, or resistance uh, fighters to actually helping them escape. Yeah. That's a whole new level of yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. traitor. And yeah. that blows uh, blow your cover, and it's about two people that you probably don't individually care about. You're yeah. about the whole point of getting uh, yeah. beating Kylo. Exactly. So, so that felt unbalanced, but I enjoyed the fact that he was a spy. Yeah, and I feel like it just they could have done more with it. Either they needed to commit it and make him really a good guy the whole time, you know, and that he's or, or have uh, it be a longer period of time until he gets found out and shot. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, Finn not actually ever revealing his secret that he kept trying to tell Ray. Yeah, that I think just got left out, and I think that yeah, yeah, I think that that just got left out with the hot so mess and stuff. I think it's on him. I uh, think it was uh, him. He's in love with Ray. He has some force sensitivity. No, I don't. I, feel, I think the, the the love story thing. Everybody was always bringing that up. A lot of my friends brought that up. Be like, oh, he just loved Ray. I'm like, I don't think so, because there's a whole thing with Rose and him. You know, that was and, r- written off, and it was written off completely. But I feel like you know that that was the the direction that that was trying to go. Um, um, and I don't think, <coughs> I thought from the very beginning <coughs> that he had some force power and stuff like that. No way, he, he, he was, didn't he, die with Kylo he, in that first fight. Yeah, he definitely seemed force sensitive. And I think this movie really touched the fact that he realized that he had some force sensitivity. You know, he, like, oh, I can feel it. Oh, this, oh, that. I know it. You well, know? I might even explain the long look Kylo gives to him on the opening scene in Force Awakens before yeah. he even defects. Yeah. And I think that uh, he actually ha- was a very force sensitive guy. And I think that uh, he wanted to tell Ray because I think he wanted to be trained. And I think that, you know, is where that was going. I think that really he wanted, you know, especially you got to think in this world now, there are no Jedi really. You know, if they are, they're hidden out there in the universe we don't know about. Stripping floors with a burn. Exactly. You know, exactly, right? So the, 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 there's going to be young people that can be taken into the a, a new Jedi temple and trained, but at this point, beggars can't be choosers. So even though Finn's an adult, I, I mean, mean, the next Yoda is probably only he, still, what, 85? He'd still be worth being trained. He's probably 50, 85. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, so. Uh, and then uh, uh, my last uh, well, that note I have written is uh, the timeline. Um, for, <laughs> this takes place what, now uh, a little over 30 years now past yeah. after the uh, events of Return of the Jedi. Rey is 18, give yeah. or take. I mean, I'm assuming she's not younger. She could be older. But trains her parents have to at least be, you know, say another 18 on top of that at minimum. Yeah. Minimum. Uh, which means that... Um, 16 at minimum. I mean. Yeah, I'm just saying. But that means that uh, Rey's dad was born more than likely... Well before Return of the Jedi. Yeah, that's just interesting that that was already put that plan was already put in motion at that point. Well, yeah. like this is like some like family thing he set up after the fact. This is you know like just hanging there like okay I need some to you know have a kid somebody come over here. Uh, this is something he had already set up in motion long before that. Yeah, well he had plans within plans in the books like he did he, would, he, had, he had plans within plans within plans and in fact you know Vader had planned to overthrow the Emperor the Emperor had foreseen that and he like you know all Sith. You know, the, the Lord takes on an apprentice, but sometimes he'll take on other apprentices uh, in the hopes of un- unseating this one before he's able to unseat him. You know, and, and these kind of things very happen a lot in that universe. Um, so the plans, then plans, and then all that being planned out, you know, that, that wasn't something I had a big issue with. Um, but it was kind of weird, you know. It's kind of like that he had children and all that, you know. The, as a Sith, like a lot of the Siths actually did have families where Jedi's really didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, and, so, and also that helps to help explain the, you know, um, Ray's power as well because, you know, Palpatine was probably the single most powerful person that we've seen force-wise in any of these movies. Uh, Barton Hunt, he beat Yoda. Uh, uh, see, I, see, I dis- disagree though. I feel like you uh, know, Luke beat Vader in a fight, and then he had Luke on the ground within seconds. Yeah, um, I mean, it's basically just Vader getting lucky and you know doing that. Um, but other than that, we never saw him beaten. And see, I disagree though. Okay, uh, Anakin and Mace Wind or Mace Windu basically had the Emperor beat. Uh, and if he would have beat him and destroyed him, if it would have been for Anakin. We assume that. Uh, uh, or it could have been Palpatine knowing that, using that to leverage Anakin. And then I, I feel like Vader, like even throughout the book series and stuff, there's a lot of opportunities he would have had to destroy the Emperor. But he didn't because he was waiting till he had the right apprentice. And his whole idea was to train Luke under him and then the both of them overthrow the Emperor. Uh, Luke, again, I feel like could have struck down the Emperor at a certain point, but he chose not to. And this is one of the big things I have, problems I have with the Star Wars universe in general, which I'm going to bring up right now. <laughs> when you know somebody's a bad guy, 
right? And this is a bad, bad person. Why is it that just because, like, Jedi's fight people and they're killing stormtroopers and stuff throughout the whole movie, yet that doesn't turn them to the dark side, right? Yeah. But when they force the, get up in front of the main bad guy and they're always like, Oh, you can strike me down, but then you're going to turn to the dark side. And so they, they like, oh, I'm just going to refuse to fight you. And they're like, okay, I'm going to kill you. Ah! And then that's it. And it's like they don't even put up a fight. And then in the end, they do exactly what the guy said. They end up killing him, you know. Uh, it's the same thing with Luke. Luke doesn't fight the Emperor, and the Emperor basically kill, you know, would have killed him. And then basically kills Rey, him and turns to Duke outside. Yeah. Yeah, and then Luke, or I mean, uh, Ray could have killed the Emperor, but she's like, oh, I don't want to turn to the dark side, and then he's like, then die! You know, it's, I mean, it's ridiculous. This is a bad guy. You can kill that bad guy without turning to the dark side. You could be like Ray said, I'm never going to turn to the dark side. But you're trying to kill everybody. And you're going to kill, you're you're kill you're strike me down in anger. I'm like, I'm just going to strike you down because yeah. I don't care. Yeah, uh, exa- <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's, again, it, that, that, and that isn't just... This new like, series. This Kylo is didn't kill all... Snoke in anger. He's just surreptitiously like, yeah. yeah, whoop, you know, <laughs> exactly. It, it's ridiculous. It, it, mm-hmm. it, it makes no sense. It's a way to to make the bad. It's get, all part of the story. Get, yeah, to give the bad guys an upper hand. That's all it is. It's just a way to give the bad guys an upper hand. Because the good guys are like, oh, I can't do it. You know, it's like with. Uh, uh, what, what was the deal with Darth Maul then? Why why could Obi Wan just cut him in half? Oh, he's the dark side now. If you kill the bad guy, <laughs> you know, it's like that makes no sense. Know. Uh, that makes yeah. no sense. And that well, then, was and all then, the series, then Lucas Luke, included. Luke throwing away his lightsaber, and then he gets zapped by lightning. I'm like, except for, unless you're at Yoda's hands, the only thing that can stop the Force lightning is a lightsaber. Yeah, right? <laughs> you could have been like, nope, you know? <laughs> nah, take that, more, more yeah. destruction to your face. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's uh, So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you can, you can nitpick in any of these films. In this series, like I said, overall, uh, if you took out... The Last Jedi just mushed the other two movies together. Uh, it's not horrible. If they, I feel like if they could have stretched out this uh, other movie and let Abrams do his own thing and maybe changed a few things, and, I would... I'm and introduce some of the concepts earlier so it made more sense once you got there. Yeah. And let's just say the underlying problem, a lot of fans, everybody, you know, they always want point fingers. And I've heard people be like, well, everybody point fingers at Lucas and Star Wars fans just like to gripe and complain. I will say... We're all getting entertainment. Yeah, yes. we're all getting entertainment. Everybody likes to gripe and complain. I will say that there's just some defending qualities in all these stories. But the one thing about this is just really irritated me is just one about the the not paying the original characters their dues and kind of sideshowing them but the number one thing is really disney dropped the ball and i don't care what anybody says disney did because when you have something like star wars this should have been like okay we're going to do three movies. They knew they were going to do a trilogy. Mm-hmm. So let's do Make a, a trilogy. trilogy. Make it a trilogy. You know, even if they were going to break up the directors, which they should have never done. Well, they do that like Marvel and it works, but because yeah. they already have the, the story locked in. Yeah. And they don't, the directors can't stray from that. Yeah. And so it's either, if you're going to do that, then assign your directors, but exactly, have your whole story. You, you, you map out your story, and you're like, we're getting from here to here. This is our story. And let's And let's the director's there it. to point the camera. Yeah. Point the camera, not like right. create your own movie. And literally, that's the thing that why everybody says, "Oh, the movie was awful," and this, that, and the other. The main reason people have a problem with Ryan Johnson is that he had the the stuff there, and he blatantly was like, "I don't like Abrams' story. I'm going to change it." They should and have given then, him a uh, standalone story to do his own thing. Exactly. With. If you would have given him a, a solo, a, a, yeah, a solo movie <laughs> or but, solo movie, yeah, no, you gave him his own Star Wars thing, and he could just done his own thing. People probably would have been like, you know, might have liked it, might have disliked it. But it wouldn't have affected the overall. It wouldn't have affected the overall story. But they had three separate scripts, all wrote individually, right? And then just mushed them together, tried to create a story with different writers. You got a Frankenstein of a trilogy. Yeah, with different writers, different directors. Yeah, it's a Frankenstein trilogy. It makes no sense. It's all over the place. It's several different people's ideas mushed together. And that is, if, inevitably, we can blame Ryan Johnson, we can blame a lot of people, but inevitably, who was in control of all that? Disney. Yeah. Somebody, we know, we know, we know names. Yeah, but I'm not gonna pick on her. Everybody picks on her enough. Just like they only had one concept for the whole Disney series, of this Star Wars, the one concept, which I know get yelled at by the girls in this one, was we have to have strong female characters. Which in itself is fine. Which is totally awesome. I love strong female characters. A lot of shows that I've watched and love, series that I watch and love, have strong female roles. But it was a good story first. And the character wasn't 
the character can, on you. The character can flourish in that situation. Yeah, and I'm not even talking about Ray. Ray, I thought was a good character. I liked Ray. And the actress was phenomenal, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but my thing was, is like, especially in Ryan Johnson's film, was just that all these female characters were pushed, and like all the male characters were buffoons. And, and then, you know, you got your original Star Wars characters getting dismantled and killed off and dis just disgraced. It was just one thing after another with the series. But, like, overall, I feel like Disney's main focus was we want to empower the women characters and get girls on, in with Star Wars. Because we feel like not enough girls like Star which Wars. Which in itself is a fine uh, goal. It is. I think it they is went a fine goal. Way. I think they went out the wrong way. And I think they were foolish to think that girls don't like Star Wars. I have more female friends who love Star Wars than I do guy friends. A lot of my guy friends are more Trekkies than Star Wars fans. You know? All I'm right. just being honest. Uh, last uh, <laughs> final thought. Um, giving the Wookiee a medal. <laughs> there is a lot. That was like, okay, that was like, okay, we give me a list of everything the fans are complaining about. Uh-huh, we can do that, we can do that, we can do that. Oh, that's easy enough. Do that, we'll give him a medal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, people were, that wasn't a real beef. That was a funny meme. That wasn't a real beef. That yeah, yeah. As a fan group. Yeah. I mean, that's an around some fairly What I always thought about when I thought about that, you know, when I first saw anything about that a long time ago, actually, was a Wookiee wouldn't wear a medal. I mean, it he, clashes with his. Yeah, other thing. he all he wears is that one thing. That's it. And they only had three to give out, maybe at the time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just like. A, a, maybe he shared his with Han. I mean, just, just ridiculous. Yeah, that it was wasn't a real beef that we had. No, <laughs> that was no. more just a funny like, "Hi, he never got a medal. Now he got a medal. Okay, whatever." So, but my overall opinion is, <laughs> out of this series of Star Wars films, this is by far my favorite. Right. I think great. it had a lot of good stuff in Had's it. Had some serious Star Wars going yeah, on. Yeah, there, there was a lot of fun. If you're just taking it as an individual film, there was a lot of fun, a lot of good Star Wars stuff. Uh, the bad on this particular film uh, was it was very very rushed. It was kind of hard to keep up with. There's just a lot going on uh, for one film. Yeah, and, and the, there's some sloppy writing because he's he's trying to go from point A to point B, but he had to go you know three other points to even be again his point A. Yeah, and but I would definitely say you know we've both talked about this where you know with the Last Jedi I was like I hate this movie but there are some things i like this movie was more i like this movie but there's some things i really hate about yeah it. i think that's our i think we agree on that yeah so uh but overall i would say that you know if you took last jedi out of this and even put those two movies back to back i would still enjoy the series better there'd be some stuff you miss but yeah. not a lot really oh snoke dying uh, ray and um uh, Kylo getting kind of joined at the hip or whatever. Yeah. Uh, some things here and there, but not and, a whole lot. Yeah, and then what happened to Luke, you know? Yeah. But that, that's really it. Yeah. Um, it's, you could do like a, it'd be interesting, like a fan edit of, uh, you yeah. know, the, 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 necessary, the necessary things from uh, Last Jedi to carry that story and then leaving off the whole, like, space chase. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, tell us what you thought. Please remember to like and subscribe. Um, if you're a fan of Star Wars, by all means, go see it. I think this is written for... Uh, casual fans more than it was for hardcore, hardcore fans. fans and also for uh, uh, cinephiles that are yeah. looking at the structure of movies yeah this was really looking to to appease a casual a, audience a, a majority of people who have watched this series already and the newer Star Wars fans and kind of make peace with them. I, just, I felt like it was more that than it was the casual fans, the, fans. The casual fans I'll go out and see a Star Wars movie when it comes out and never actually probably buy or rent them. Mm -hmm. No, the vast majority of people will like it, and the box office speaking the truth to that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, until next time, uh, please remember to like and subscribe, and uh, yeah, leave some comments on this, and uh, we'll probably pick this uh, topic up at some point, I guarantee you. <laughs> See you guys.